So I don't want to spend the entire podcast going through your entire story because I know you've documented that before. But for people who are brand new, I think it would be good for them to get a summary and an overview of mm -hmm. a little bit of your story. So let's uh, let's spend some time on that. Yeah, it's a, uh, I was born in North Korea in 1993 in the border, like northern part of Korea. That's a northern part has a border from China. I was born there. I've never even seen the map of the world. I had no clue that I was born into the Hermit Kingdom. I was singing the songs like Nothing to Envy because the regime told me that uh, there was nothing for us to envy because you were living in a socialist paradise. However, even though this was uh, like the songs that we were forcing in real life, uh, we were daily starved and people were getting uh, disappeared at nighttime and people were getting executed publicly and just dead bodies on the streets everywhere. And at school, I had to go to school to learn but everything that we learned at school was complete propaganda. Uh, they said, you know, Americans are monsters. They were like cold-blooded reptiles. They were trying to attack us. But however, we are so lucky that we had our amazing new leader to protect us from this uh, capitalist monsters. And therefore, we need to die for the revolution. And I was, you know, learning, brainwashing to become a socialist revolutionary. And eventually, by the time I was 13 years old, we could not really simply find any more food. And the reason why North Koreans are starving is because the regime uses uh, starvation as a tool to co control the population. And imagine if the population are not fed and they have really no time to thinking about anything else. Like they don't have time to think about uh, I mean, social justice or freedom and human rights, really. Only thing that people are allowed to think about is where can we find the next meal. And by the time when I was 13 years old, we could not find any next meal, even in the nature. And up until that point, I was looking, eating grasshoppers, dragonflies and plants to survive. And even that was dried up. So we had to find a way to survive. And that was crossing the frozen Yellow River into China. And that led me to escape from North Korea. How many people, I don't know how well these numbers are documented, but how many people have been able to get out of that country in the way that you have? So this is all estimates because nobody knows. You can never have a public survey in North Korea, right? It's the sure. most closed country. Uh, for the U.S. for the last almost 80 years, only just about 200 North Korean defectors made it to America from mm -hmm. North Korea. And there are estimated to be 300,000 North Korean defectors are currently in China. And they are the victims of modern day slavery. They are being sold and killed and the organs are harvested out of them as a by the human traffickers in China right now. That's crazy. I mean, North Korea is so fascinating to me and I think to many people because it's this one country in the world with, as you said, 20, 25 million people, not a, not, a, not a tiny country, a similar population to, I guess, somewhere like Australia. Mm -hmm. And we know very little about it. Most people don't know anything about it. I mean, it's the only country where... I mean, I think you're you're the first and only person from that nation I've ever spoken to. Mm. Um, you don't meet people from there. Obviously, almost nobody has gone there. Um, you don't see any sort of international participation in anything except for seeing the occasional military marches on TV or something like that. And it's just so strange how in this modern day era with the Internet and social media, all the interconnectivity, it sort of fascinates me how there can be this nation of 25 million people that we know so little about and have such little communication with. So how do they, especially now, I mean, maybe I can understand more how they did it in the past, but at this stage, how do they still manage to keep people so disconnected and isolated from the rest of the world? So basically, each 
so North Korea so far had three kings, three dictators from the same family. Uh, it, even though it was as a communist country it began, it became a kingdom. Uh, so each king comes in, their level of fairness increase. And back then, of course, the North Korea, if one person commits a crime, it doesn't just end you, that person getting punished. Literally, the three generations of family can get punished for one person's crime. Mm -hmm. And that's how they call getting uh, rid of the root of a cause. You know, possibility of a cause can somebody resist. And not only that, they completely blocked the information flow inside the country. North Koreans don't even know the existence of internet. We don't even have electricity. If you see the photos of North Korea at night from the satellite pictures, it is literally the darkest place on earth right now. And so there's no information flow and there's no freedom of movement between people. So even within North Korea, as a North Korean, you don't have a freedom to go to the next town without a government permit. And you cannot even go sleep over at your friend's house without registering at the authority. Mm -hmm. So every movement is restricted. There's no information. And even if somebody knew something, if you spread that, like the, literally the first thing my mom told me as a young girl was, don't even whisper because the birds and mice could hear me. She said the most dangerous thing I had in my body was my tongue. Because mm -hmm. if I said one thing wrong, that was going to kill up to eight generations of my family. So with that fear, that brutality is something called zero tolerance. Mm -hmm. That's in the dictator's handbook. They literally tolerate nothing. And that kind of brutality. And also, as I said, even though North Korea, Kim Il-sung came into power promising North Korean people the equality of outcomes. Nobody's going to be ever poor. Nobody ever going to be rich. We are going to be all equal. And he abolish private property. Nobody could own a home, nobody could own a bicycle or a car or animal, nothing. You could not own anything in the country. Mm -hmm. When regime took everything, they divided North Koreans into 51 different classes of caste system. And North Koreans are a homogeneous nation. We look the same, we have the same genetics, we have the same language. And same people dividing them 51 different classes and Based on your caste system, regime decides who gets fed, who gets to starve to death. So the people are divided from each other. And the another method the regime prevents people to mix between classes. So when you get married in North Korea, and if the guy was in a higher class and girls a lower class, if the, they get married, the girl don't marry up. The guy's entire family, the generation go down with that guy. Mm -hmm. So families are going to not allow the person to marry somebody who's lower their class, right? And that prevents of the mix of the caste between them. It's so, it's so bizarre to me.